Hello guys, this is Dr. B for AP Chemistry Topic 6.9, Hess's Law. This is the last topic for Unit 6. We still have Unit 7, 8, and 9 coming up, so yeah. Anyway, Topic 6.9, Hess's Law. The learning objective is to be able to represent a chemical or physical process as a sequence of steps, and we're going to use Hess's Law to do that. And how do we do that? We'll see. Uh, Henri Ness in 1840 discovered a very useful principle, which was named for him. So like I said, kind of vain, but not really. Hess's law states that the enthalpy of a given chemical reaction is constant, regardless of the reaction happening in one step or many steps. In other words, if a chemical equation, the target, can be written as a sum of other chemical equations, the enthalpy change of the target chemical equation will equal the sum of the enthalpy changes of the other chemical equations. Hess's law is based on the idea that enthalpy is a state function, and state functions are beyond the scope of the AP chemistry, but the general idea of a state function means that the numerical value of a property doesn't depend on the path taken to find the value. Yeah, let's not worry about that too much. These are the key ideas. The reactions must add up to the target reaction. If you reverse a reaction, meaning you switch the products and reactants, the sign for delta H will also flip, negative to positive, vice versa, but the magnitude stays the same. If you multiply to change coefficients to match the target reaction, you must do the same to the whole reaction, and you must do this for the same delta H value as well. We have a list of reactions given here with a set of delta H's, and it wants us to find the enthalpy change for the reaction below. So in order to do this, you have to do a lot of math, essentially. Um, you're trying to end up with this reaction here on the bottom this is our target and we got to figure out what we're going to do in order to achieve it so for example we see in the first one the first reaction here and over here we see we have three no2 the only no2 we have in our list of one two three reactions is on the first one but it's on the right side on the product side so we so we can um, flip a reaction, if you will, but we have to. When we do that, we have to flip the sign for the delta H for that. Um, so there's a lot that's going to have to happen <laughs> for this particular reaction, unfortunately. So let's see. Kind of work your way from the top to the bottom and see what we end up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is because we want to get from three, we want to get two to three. So what you can actually do is multiply by fractions, which is low-key kind of crazy, not going to lie. So, for example, number one, I want to show you, and then we'll see what we need to do with this one. So for the first reaction, we're going to have, we're going to multiply, actually, this whole thing here by a negative, well, yeah, it's negative because it's opposite. So three halves. Multiply the whole thing by negative three halves so because you're flipping the whole thing so it's going to be negative you're going to multiply the reaction with the three halves and you're also going to do the negative three halves with the delta h so for example it's going to be three no2 gas produces three no gas plus three halves O2. So my delta H, oh, I need more space. So my delta H is gonna be the math a negative 116 times negative 3 divided by 2. So it's going to be a positive 174 kilojoules. And look at the next one. I have 2N2 plus 5O2 plus 2H plus 2 waters <laughs> makes 4H and 3, NO3. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. What can I do? Because I have the waters. The only one that has, notice how... Water is on the left side of my final reaction, so that's good. I can keep this all here, but 
it's two halves, sorry, it's two H2Os and then one H2 in the final. So what do I have to do with all of these? I have to multiply this by one half. Everything we multiplied by one half. So it's going to be N2 gas plus five halves O2 plus H2O liquid produces two HNO3 aqueous. Then my delta H will be negative 128 kilojoules. All right. <clears throat> so let's see. You'll notice that uh, for now we have our three halves O2. Um, we have five halves O2. We have a lot going on here. But notice how there's no halves or anything like that in the final reaction. So how do we? What do we need to do? As you can see, the NO is on the right side, it looks like, but because we have the three NO2s up, NOs up here, I'm sorry, we and we have two, we have one NO here on the front, on the right side. What we can actually do is flip this around. Oops, flip that around. because that will get us, it's kind of subtracting. So if you have three on the product side, two on the reactant side, the one leftover is on the product side, that's where you want that one. And we're gonna see what happens to the O2s in a second, so, and the N2, etc. Multiply everything by negative one, and you, that means you have to flip it. So it's gonna be two NO gas produces N2 gas, plus O2 gas. This is going to be delta H of negative 183 kilojoules. So how do we end up with our final thing, right, essentially? Well, I'll do the easy part first. That's going to be the math. <laughs> so the delta H, putting all those together, just add them, because you have negative signs, you have negative 137 kilojoules. Okay, so luckily for us, I'm going to try to do this color coordinated. Hopefully it works out. So the N2s are gone. Okay. We have two NOs. So like I said, it's going to be kind of like three on the product side, two on the yeah, reactant side. So it's going to leave us with only just one NO on my product side. I can drop this directly because I don't have this anywhere else. So this is going to be three NO, should be a different color, it's fine. Three NO2 gas. Plus water. That's the only one I have. I need very good water. So then this is right there. Now the trick is the HNO3s. Well, not the. Tr that's not the trick. This <laughs> the HNO3 is actually easy because I can just drop this one. What's it? I'm going to drop this down. So the question is, what happens to the oxygens? Well, math-wise, I have five halves O2 here. I have three halves. And then I have on my this is my reactant side, my product side. I have three halves and I have a one. But remember, technically one can be a fraction, as in two over two. So if they're both unpresent on both sides, they disappear. So I'm left with my final reaction. I'm just going to box it in just for effect. 
Then I have my delta H of negative 137 kilojoules. That was a lot, I know. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next one. Last one, I guess. Calculate the enthalpy for the reaction. A plus 2B produces C plus 2D. If 4B plus 3E produces 2C. And it has a certain delta H. 2D plus 3 halves E time, uh, produces A, I'm sorry, and the delta H of negative 15 kilojoules. So looking at this, we know we have to keep our first, um, our first reaction in the same place. But notice my 4B and my 2C, I have 4B and 2C, the final I only have 2B and C. So that means I'm going to multiply all of this right here by a half. That means my delta H gets divided by 2. Okay, so I'm going to write this down so we can see what it looks like. So I probably should have done it this way, but it's okay. So it's going to be 2B because 4 divided by 2, 4 times a half, right? Plus 3 halves E produces C. Then my delta H is going to be 62 kilojoules. I look, I see that I clearly need 2D and A flipped. So I'm just going to multiply all of this by negative 1. So it's going to be, the negative flips the thing, so it's going to be A plus, oh, A, sorry, not plus, I made a mistake. A produces 2D plus 3 halves E. And lo and behold, look what happens. The 3 half E's cancel out, and I am left with A plus 2B produces C plus 2D. My delta H is going to be now a positive 15 kilojoules. We're both positive, so just add them. Delta H is going to be, my enthalpy will be 77 kilojoules. All right, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks, guys. That's the end of Unit 6.